Hi friends, so today we are here with another exciting topic, acid-base chemistry. So today we are going to learn about acid-base chemistry. So let's begin. So today we are going to learn about acid-base chemistry as we discussed and in that we will be talking about Arrhenius theory, bronsted lowry theory and Lewis acid-base theory. And then we will talk about amphoteric nature shown by water. So let's start with the Arrhenius theory of acid. So as per Arrhenius theory, acids are the species having a hydrogen atom in them and gives rise to H plus ions in the aqueous solution. So here as per the Arrhenius theory, what we can understand is are those species or those compounds which has hydrogen atoms in them and in aqueous solution they release H plus ions or hydrogen ions. Only those compounds or those species are known as acids. For example here H2SO4 in water what will it release? It will release H plus ion and SO4 to minus. Now in every aqueous solution in water what happens is this hydrogen it cannot be found in a, a very free form. It always combines with H2O and forms a hydronium ion that is H3O. So we can say that if there is a hydronium ion present in aqueous solution that means H plus or hydrogen ion is released which combines with water to form hydronium ion. Right? Even in case of HNO3 that is nitric acid in that in uh, water again hydronium ion can be seen and NO3 is released. So in those aqueous solutions where uh, acid is added, we can see that the number of H plus ions increase because it releases H plus ions in them. And that is the reason we can say that this is acid because the amount of hydrogen ion in that solution has increased and this will reduce the pH and that is why it turns into an acidic solution. Now let's see what it talks about bases. Okay, so let's talk about Arrhenius theory of bases. So bases are those species that contain OH groups and produce OH minus ion. Then an aqueous solution is prepared of such species. So for acid it gives out hydrogen ion and for bases it gives out OH minus ion. Okay, so for example, in a solution, in an aqueous solution, if there are compounds which increases the number of OH minus, then those compounds are called bases, right? So because of the addition of OH minus, the pH also rises, and which is why it becomes basic solution, right? So bases are those which releases OH minus ions in an aqueous solution. Now let's understand the Arrhenius theory of bases. So as per Arrhenius theory, bases are those species that contains OH group and produce OH minus ions when an aqueous solution is prepared of such species. So in acid, it is H plus ion that is released and in bases, OH minus ions are released in the aqueous solution. When such species are added. So here as per Arrhenius theory of bases, the OH group are present and it will dissociate and release OH minus ions. So for example, potassium hydroxide that is KOH, it has an OH group. In water, it dissociates into K plus and OH minus. So the solution will have more number of OH minus in them. So it increases the amount of OH minus or hydroxide ions in them. So therefore, these species are known as bases. Similarly, in case of lithium hydroxide, which is LiOH in water, it increases the OH minus ion by dissociating into Li plus lithium ion and hydroxide ion. Now, there are some limitations to, to his theory. Okay, what are they? It is limited to the aqueous solution and species containing hydrogen and hydroxide ions only. So like we discussed earlier, 
as per arrhenius theory the species which are giving a hydrogen ion are acids and those which are giving out oh minus ions are bases and those two are in aqueous solution so we can say that it is only talking about more of the aqueous solution right and only about those species which contain hydrogen as well as hydroxide ions right so that is the biggest demerit of arrhenius theory it is not applicable to other species that do not contain hydrogen and hydroxide ion so for example what about ammonia it is a base but cannot give oh minus ions on hydrolysis right so but does that make it like it's not a base it does raise the ph the ph of ammonia is higher than 7 that makes it a base right but it does not give out oh minus ions but uh, as per arrhenius theory it should release oh minus ion in aqueous solution so that is another demerit right so for example sodium carbonate a base does not give out oh minus ions in aqueous solution again sodium carbonate it doesn't have oh but still it is a base right so this is a demerit of arrhenius theory now we will see what bronsted lorry has to say about acid and bases okay if he has a more uh, logical solution to the demerits of arrhenius theory so bronsted lorry theory also known as bronsted lorry proton transfer theory says that acids are those species which tend to give away or donate hydrogen ions to other species okay to other species and bases as those species which accept protons from other species or acid okay so what we can say is acids what do they do they tend to donate so they are donating protons to whom to bases right so acids are the ones who are donating protons bases are the ones which are accepting protons okay so this is what bronsted lorry theory says now for example here hno3 plus methanol okay so this is nitric acid and this is methanol so when they to react what happens hno3 is giving h plus to ch3 oh right so that makes it ch3 oh Two and there is a positive charge because of the extra proton given to methanol. Okay, so H plus from HNO three is given to CH three OH, and therefore it becomes one proton rich. Okay, and HNO three loses one proton. Therefore, we can say that hno3 is acid because it had the tendency to donate one proton and uh, ch3oh that is methanol is a base because it accepted one proton from acid right now let's talk about bronsted lorry theory okay hcl acts as an acid Using one proton and water acts as a base that accepts that proton, resulting in the formation of hydronium ion and chloride ion. So let's see the equation. So here, what is happening? In case of HCl and water, hydronium ion is released because HCl will dissociate into uh, H plus and Cl minus. So we have the Cl minus here, that is the chloride ion, right? Now the H plus ion is attaching itself with the H2O and forming a hydronium ion like we already discussed that we cannot find the H plus ion in free state it always in aqueous solution attaches with uh, H2O and forms hydronium ion that is H3O plus right now the thing here to note as per Bronsted Lorry theory is that uh, what are conjugate bases so now this is an acid right if you remove one hydrogen 
from this acid. What will happen? It will form its conjugate base. So here chlorine is short of one hydrogen and if there was one hydrogen here then it would form the acid. So that becomes a conjugate base for HCl. Now in this case what is happening? H2O here is getting an additional hydrogen from HCl and it is one hydrogen extra of the original compound. So here H2O was acting like a base whereas H3O since it has gained one additional hydrogen it forms its conjugate acid right. So what we can see here is that this is acid 1 and because Cl- minus has one hydrogen less so it becomes its conjugate base and similarly in this case it here water is acting as a base and since there is one additional hydrogen added to this it becomes its conjugate base. So now this and this becomes conjugate acid base 1 and this is conjugate acid base 2 ok. So this is how we call the conjugate acid and base. So whenever some acid is giving up one hydrogen ion it forms a conjugate base pair with the remaining ion and whenever a base is gaining another hydrogen ion it is forming its conjugate acid pair right. Now it is considered a more precise theory for acid and bases among all theories proposed ok. Why is it sir? According to this theory acids are those species that accept lone pair of electrons and bases as those species which tend to give away or donate their electron pair. Now the key words here are lone pair of electrons ok. So what we are going to first identify is which of the compound carries a lone pair of electron ok and those species that accept these lone pair of electrons become acid and those which tend to give away or donate these lone pair of electrons are known as bases ok. So let us see what we understand here acids, acids are those species that accept ok, acid accept and bases they donate. What do they donate and what do they accept? Electrons. Okay. So, it is all about accepting and donating the electrons. So, those species which accept electrons are known as acids. Those species which donate electrons, they are called bases. Okay. So, this is Lewis acid base theory. So, if you want to remember it more effectively, then you can see Le. Okay. Le in the word Lewis. So, L that means you can remember that Lewis uh, starts with L and E is electrons. So, this theory is about exchange of electrons. Okay. So, if accepted, then it is acid because AA. Okay. And uh, basis is the one who donates electron. Okay. So, let us see one example here. Okay. So, BF3 plus N H3. Here N has lone pair of electrons. Okay. So, which is given to B. Okay. So, this has lone pair of electrons which is then donated to B. So, that makes B negative and N positively charged. Okay. So, therefore, the structure then becomes okay. So, the structure becomes like this where B 
becomes negatively charged and N becomes positively charged. So, N becomes positively charged as it has donated its electrons to B which had unfilled electron in their orbit. So, B was short of electrons which was received from the lone pair of electrons donated by N and therefore it gains negative charge because of gaining electrons and N becomes positively charged because it donated electrons to B. Okay? So, this is the electron transfer which Lewis acid based theory talks about. Okay? So, let us understand this here in more detail. Okay? So, here as you can see this is what NH3. All right? So, N as you can see it has a lone pair of electron right? and here what it is doing is it is transferring these electrons to the H plus in water. Okay? So, therefore, it is becoming NH4 and it is gaining a positive charge okay? and therefore, the resultant compound in BF3 what happens is what we saw is because B was short of electron in its outer orbit, it gains electron from NH3 because N was having lone pair of electrons. So, therefore, it becomes negatively charged and N becomes positively charged since N donated its electrons to B. Okay? Theories we learned until now have considered the examples of acids that are neutral or have no charge on them like HCl and H2SO4. But some compounds possess a charge on it and still acts as an acid like NH4+. So, this is one case where you can see that NH4 plus has a charge on it. Okay. But HCl and H2SO4, they have satisfied each other's charge and therefore, they exist as a neutral form. Okay. So, in theories mostly whenever we talk about acids and bases, we usually talk about the examples of HCl and H2SO4. Right? But here, we have to also consider compounds like NH4 which carries a charge on them. Okay, and due to the extra proton attached, it attains a positive charge. Okay? So, why is it having a positive charge? Because of the extra proton attached to it. Right? So, it has donated its electrons and it has formed a bond with the positively charged hydrogen ion and that is why it has gained positive charge on it. Right? It has an overall positive charge. So, by donating its extra proton, it forms ammonia. So, now since it has an extra positive charge on it, what it tends to do is it donates this extra proton which is giving it its positive charge and it forms ammonia. What is ammonia? It is NH3 which would be the conjugate base of ammonium ion. Like we already discussed, what is a conjugate base? The conjugate bases are those which are short of one proton. Right? So, in this case, since it has one extra proton, it has a tendency, it can give away this additional proton to any other compound. right? So, it gives away or it donates this extra proton and it forms ammonia. right? So, ammonia because it is short of one proton, it becomes the conjugate base of ammonium ion. right? For example, so let us understand this more clearly. So, as you can see, this NH4 plus is positively charged because of one extra hydrogen or one extra proton. It gives away one additional H plus ion and becomes NH3. So, this makes it the conjugate base of ammonium ion. Okay? So, now let us summarize the difference between all these three theories that we learned so far. Okay? So, first is Arrhenius theory. Arrhenius theory we can remember as A and H. So, both these letters are present in Arrhenius theory. So, we can remember that Arrhenius theory talks about in aqueous solution the formation of ions. Which ion? Hydrogen as well as hydroxide ion. So, here H represents the hydroxide or hydrogen ion. And A represents the aqueous solution. So, 
Arrhenius theory talks about ion formation in aqueous solution. Which ion formation? Hydrogen as well as hydroxide ion formation. Now, Bronsted Laurie theory talks about proton transfers from acid to base. And Lewis theory is the opposite of Bronsted Laurie theory, that is the electron transfer. So, you can also remember it from Le, that is the transfer of electron, E for electron and L for Lewis theory. Okay. So, for Lewis theory, there is the electron transfer from bases to acid, and opposite to that, Bronsted Laurie theory, proton transfer from acid to bases. Right. So, this is how we will remember the difference between the three theories. Okay, now let us talk about the amphoteric nature shown by water. So, what does water do? What is water? Is it acid or is it base? Okay, so they are showing an amphoteric nature. What does that mean? In the universe, water is considered a species that shows both acidic as well as basic properties depending on the external environment. Okay, so depending on the external environment, it can act as acid or it can also act as base. Isn't that interesting? Right. So, water can do that and that is why water can be said that it has an amphoteric nature. Okay. So, in the following example, we will give you a brief idea regarding the amphoteric nature of water. So, in the presence of an acid, H2O behaves as a base by accepting a proton from HCl. Right. So, what we uh, earlier discussed was if there is an acid, acid has the tendency to give away protons, right? Which is what we learned in which theory? It was Bronsted Laurie theory, right? So, as per Bronsted Laurie theory, we know that acids are the species which donates a proton, right? And the species that accepts the proton becomes the base. Now, here we can see when HCl reacts with water, what it is doing is HCl is donating its proton and who is accepting it? Water and it is turning into hydronium ion, right? So, that makes water behave like a base, okay? Now, as you can see here, H2O and HCl. So, it becomes H3O by accepting a proton from HCl, right? So, HCl is donating one proton to H2O. So, it becomes H3O and Cl minus is released, okay. So, in this case, so what is happening is this becomes the base here, okay. So, it is acting like a base in this particular equation, okay. So, let us understand this better. As you can see here again, it accepts a proton as it becomes a base. So, in this case, as per the Lewis theory as well, you can see that Cl will have lone electrons, right? And this lone electrons is because of which it becomes negatively charged. And hydrogen, it donates the proton to H2O, okay? And uh, it becomes a base here, okay? So, it forms hydronium ion by accepting one proton, okay? So, it has a positive charge on it and Cl minus becomes negatively charged, okay. Now, in this particular example, what happens is, now here NH3 is not an acid, it is a base, right. So, in previous example, we saw what happens and how water reacts with the acid, it acts like a base. Now, in front of base, how it is going to react, okay. So, now we will understand the duality of the reaction of water, okay, the amphoteric nature shown by water, right. So, in this case, we are subjecting it to ammonia, that is a base, right. Now, when it reacts with ammonia, OH minus is formed and NH4 plus, that means, what is happening here? Here, H2O is donating one hydrogen to NH3 and NH3 is getting converted into hydronium ion which is acting as an acid. We saw it in earlier example how NH4 plus it is a charged species which acts as an acid. 
so right so in this case what is happening right now here is that in case of base water donates its proton and makes nh4 plus so it acquires an additional proton and so nh3 acquires one additional proton and water loses one proton right so as you can see here what is happening this is water it donates one proton to nh3 okay so nh3 has two lone pair of electron it donates these electrons to uh, h2o and it becomes positively charged okay and oh minus is released after gaining electron so even as per lewis method we have proved that here in this case water is acting like a acid correct so now let's discuss the previous year's question okay so this question was asked in neat 2016 okay so the question is boric acid is an acid because its molecule contains replaceable h plus ion gives up a proton accepts oh minus from water releasing proton or four combines with a proton from the water molecule so let's understand it by first seeing the structure of boric acid okay so the boric acid structure is like this okay now it is an acid because why is it an acid so is it what was the question does it contain replaceable h plus ion so from the structure can you see any replaceable h plus ion here no right so i think we can rule out the first option now what exactly is happening here when it reacts with water it forms borate ion and it gives out h plus ion from the water right so in this case what is happening is it is reacting with water and forming borate ion and h2o from h2o one hydrogen atom is released okay so what we can say is it accepts oh from water and release one proton like we saw here that from h2o it accepted one oh and one hydrogen ion is released right so therefore the third option that is it accepts oh minus from water releasing proton is the correct answer now this question came in jwe mains 2018 so which of the following is a lewis acid ph3 bch3 thrice nah nf3 now we can say that in first case ph3 here p has electron lone pair of electrons to donate right and in case of bch3 let's find out okay so now the structure of bch3 is something like this now we know that b it has few electrons short in its outer orbit right so we saw it in the example of bf3 okay so we know that b is short of electrons now if we add it to our water what is going to happen because of the free lone electrons from h2o that is our water it is going to gain electrons from water and it will become negatively charged because it gained electron and since water donated electrons it will become positively charged right so in this case what we can say is since bch3 thrice is accepting electrons it makes it a lewis acid okay now what about nh and nf3 again in both these cases they have extra lone pair of electrons to donate that makes them a base a lewis base instead of a lewis acid so the correct answer would be bch3 thrice okay 
so this is the correct answer for the question i hope you enjoyed learning about the acid and bases and now all the confusion about which is acid and which is bases can be answered easily thank you